Welcome to the second section of this course. From this section, we'll be looking for what pathological changes we can find on the X-ray other than the normal anatomy we've been talking about. So let's get started with A for airways. Now, when you check the airways, you ask yourself three questions. Is there any evidence of narrowing? Is the trachea straight and midline or there is any deviation? Is the carina wide more than 100 degrees? And by the way, carina is where the trachea bifurcates into left and right main bronchus. So let's take each point in details and we'll start with airway narrowing. Now the most important case about that is narrowing of the lower part of the larynx as known as subglottic airway narrowing. And this radiographic finding can be seen in croup, which is one of the most common infectious pediatric emergencies that is usually caused by a virus and leads to swelling inside the larynx and trachea which interferes with normal breathing and produces the classic symptoms of barking cough and respiratory stridor. Now in this case, x-ray isn't usually performed, but when it's done, it may show a characteristic narrowing of the airways known as the steeple sign because the subglottic stenosis which resembles a steeple in shape. And by the way, the steeple sign is suggestive of the diagnosis but is absent in half of cases. Now moving on to the second airway abnormality that can be seen on x-ray which is airway deviation. Usually trachea is situated in a midline position. However, when tracheal deviation is present, the trachea will be displaced in the direction of less pressure, meaning that if one side of the chest cavity has an increase in pressure, let's say the right side here, then the trachea will shift towards the opposite one. Now let's discuss some cases when there is unequal intrathoracic pressure between the left and the right side. And we'll start with the collection of abnormal air in the pleural space, a condition known as pneumothorax. As you know, the pressure in the pleural cavity is lower than the atmosphere pressure. So, if somehow these two spaces are connected, then more and more air will begin to accumulate and as it does so, the lung on that side becomes compressed. If air continues to accumulate, eventually the intrapleural space becomes distended enough and that it begins to push the heart, mediastinal structures and the airways to the contralateral side resulting in tracheal deviation away from the side of the pneumothorax. Like in this case here, which is for a male patient who stabbed to the left anterior chest so that a connection now is between the atmosphere and pleural cavity has been made and air started to accumulate in the intrapleural space. Here is the pleural space now and here is the left lung and we can notice how mediastinal structures have been pushed to the right side. So this is an example of a case that leads to tracheal deviation away from the affected side. On the other hand, some cases will lead to tracheal deviation towards the affected side. And there are many reasons. One of them is atelectasis, which is a loss of lung volume that is caused by a variety of ventilation disorders, such as a tumor mass obstructing the airways. So, if this is a normal airway, then when it's obscured by a foreign body or malignancy, the alveoli after the obstruction won't be ventilated, and gas here will be reabsorbed, which leads finally to lung collapse. And this is just for one small bronchial, but what if a primary or secondary large bronchi is obstructed, then the result will be a larger area of collapsed lung and that will lead finally to displacement of the hilum and mediastinal structures towards the affected side, like in this case here, in which the right upper zone is now completely opaque and we can notice tracheal deviation to the right which turned to be due to obstructing lung cancer in this patient. Now, there are many other reasons of deviation away from or towards the affected side. For example, what do you think pleural effusion or excess fluid that accumulates in the pleural cavity will cause? Yeah, of course, it can cause deviation away from the affected side. And what if there were a large mass in one lung? It will push everything away from the affected side, right? While let's say one of the lungs failed to develop, 
i.e. a genesis of one of the lungs then what will happen the deviation will be towards the affected side right because there is no normal lung here to occupy the space and the very same goes for surgical removal of the lung as known as pneumonectomy so you don't have to memorize this list but just think what can happen in each case and you nailed it Finally, sometimes there are other than pulmonary causes of tracheal deviation, like mediastinal masses. Now we move on to the third question, is the carina wide or normal? But first, what is carina? Well, tracheal carina is where the trachea bifurcates into the left and right main bronchus, and this angle can be abnormally widened in some conditions due to the mechanical splaying of the bronchi. So, here's what normal carina would be. Okay, and this is what a wide carina would look like. You see the difference, right? Now, what are the causes of a widened carina? Actually, there are many conditions like a mass under the carina or left atrial enlargement, as in this case here. But this sign is a poor diagnostic value due to the lack of sensitivity and specificity in identifying the underlying pathology. So, when you check the x-ray, don't forget to ask yourself these three questions in assessing the airways. Is there any narrowing? Can you see any deviation? And is the carina wide or not? Finally, I just want to mention not so common but very important and potentially fetal case, especially in children, which is foreign body aspiration. Sometimes, this foreign body is visible on a simple CXR like this pin here. But sometimes it's not visible, as in this case here, in which an 18-month-old baby had acute onset of respiratory distress while playing in the frontal yard. So the history is very suggestive of foreign body aspiration, right? And on examination, you notice a unilateral diminished breath sounds with inspiratory wheezing, but on the CXR you can't find the foreign body. Here, you can look for other signs of foreign body aspiration on CXR like hyperlucency and reduced pulmonary markings as you can see here in comparison with the right side. And this is because air is trapped here as it will enter the bronchus around the foreign body but cannot exit. We can see also that there is slightly increased density over the left hilum. So to confirm the diagnosis, an expiratory film may be sought in patients who can cooperate, but an 18-month-old baby cannot. So, you can do a bilateral decubitus lateral films, and here they are. So, normally, the dependent lung will collapse partially, but when there is obstructive foreign body, there will be air trapping and hyperlucency of the dependent lung, as you can see here on the right. And here, this film has also highlighted the stone obstructing the left main bronchus, which we couldn't see on the frontal film. So this is how to assess the airways. Now let's take a quick quiz and move on to the next section.